So what's your nationality, man? Okay, so so-called African American, correct? Okay, so let me ask you something. Give me Romans chapter three, verse thirty. I'm sorry. Give me Romans chapter three, verse one. Let's get to the point. Go to verse three. Romans chapter three, verse one. Use my Bible real quick. It's a little small. Good, good. Romans chapter three, verse two. Bear with me real quick, brother. Because what we gonna do? We have to understand that here in America, that in this society we have been bred and we have been taught by another man's understanding, in particular the Caucasian race. The Bible says that he's from the nation of Edom, okay? Everybody has a biblical origin. And what I'm gonna show you is your biblical origin. The lineage, the blood that runs through your vein, your lineage of your fathers will take you back to Adam, the son of God, thus making you a son of the living God. You understand? But not everybody is the son of God. Yes, God created all things, but you gotta understand that we don't think how God thinks. God made many different nations, you understand? So with that, he only chose one. We don't know that it's us. So read the scripture real quick. Romans chapter three, verse one. Verse, thir verse uh, four. Come on. God forbid. God forbid. <laughs> the, book, the verses before that is continuing, the verse we're reading it. It says, God forbid. The question at hand was, shall God's word make none effect just because somebody don't want to believe in the Bible. So all praises, brother, you came up to listen to the word because it's not our voice, it's God's word. That's what we share right now. And we're going to do it in truth. I'm not going to lie to you because I wouldn't lie to myself or learn a lot. You understand? So we're showing you the truth of the Bible. So would God's word be of none effect if nobody believed? Charles, that's your name, right? Okay, read on. Yay! We're meaning, meaning this. Is it going to change anything that God prophesied of? You understand? Because it's prophesied that there's going to be an end. We're going to show you how to prepare for the end. You understand? And what's going to happen after the end to you and your nation. So read on. Come on. Come on. Let God be true. It says, ain't nothing going to change. Let God, wait, hold on. Read verse 4 again from the top. God forbid. Meaning, no, ain't nothing going to change. Read on. Yay. Yay. Let God be true. Look, the Bible said, let God be true. Not my words, not okay. your words or your opinions or the pastor's opinion or America's opinion. It said what? Let God be true. It said let, listen to me now. It says let God be true. Where did God ever call you an African? What scripture? I've been looking too, brother. I ain't even found the word in the Bible. You understand? Where did God ever call anybody on earth that called himself this an American? No. You don't find that in the Bible. You understand? So the Bible saying this is, this is a commandment. Let God be true and every man a liar. Now I'm gonna show you what you do find in the Bible. Because the so-called African Americans, the so-called Haitians, the so-called Jamaicans, the so-called Puerto Ricans, they are the Israelites. Now you find Israel in the Bible. And then they were taught that they were Africans and all these other names. So it said, let God be true, come on. But every man a liar. And every, the white man that called us a slave, a liar. Give me Joel, I mean Jeremiah chapter two, verse 12 real quick. Come on, let's get it to him real quick. Guess what, brother? Our lineage, listen, you remember this, right? You remember this, right? This is what happened to us as a people. But this right here is not a part of who we are. This was a punishment put upon us, you understand? But this is not the best that we can do as a people. You understand? This is not This is not us. Because they say, okay, um, our history started in the 1600s, right? In slavery. Well, where were we before then? How did they get a bunch of people and take us over here? What were we doing before we was in slave ships? What were, huh? We were free, we were keeping our own laws in the west parts of Africa, but even before we was in Africa, guess what? We was in the land of our own nativity, Israel. Right. You understand? You know that land right now that white people are in and they stole it from us? That's what happened. The Israelis, really biblically speaking, they are not the real Jews. Well, you are. Yeah, they call them, you are. They said they, they call them like Jews. Uh, hey, see, look, there you go. My brother got some sense on his brain, on his shoulders. Check this out. The ISH is like if I say blackish. It's not fully black like your beard. Yeah, it's just a faded of the black. I like right? this, right? It, it ain't green. It's green, green. -ish. Right, green ish. So it's not really the actual original. It's something that's pertaining to it, right? So if I say somebody is Jewish, they're not the real Jew. But if I say that you are the Jew, and I can prove it that you the Jew, guess what? It's proof that in the Bible it goes back to your nationality. Bring it up. So read this real quick. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 14. Read this. Check this out. I mentioned this right here. Hold on real quick. We read this. 
Jeremiah, you gotta go. Okay, come on here. I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk. Two four, four, 14. 214. Jeremiah 214. Jeremiah was also a black man that looked just like he was of the tribe of Levi. You understand? The so called Haitian people of today. Read that. Is Israel a servant? You are Israel. Now, the question that hand God is asking Are you a servant? Were you meant to serve? Will you have a job? Yeah. You work? Okay, good. I'll praise Where you work at? I work at Target. You work at Target, right? So, the white man, because we know it's a white man that made Target. Was you made to serve in the Target? Me, myself. I work for the company Disney, right? Was I made to serve in Disney? Oh, okay. Was we made to serve, to be servants to the white man's company? Are we servants? We should be the ones giving the jobs out. You understand? Giving the opportunities. But God said, no, uh-uh. I'm going to take that from you. So the Bible, God is asking this. What? Read it again. Is Israel a servant? Are you a servant? And what else? Is he a home-born slave? Are you a slave? God said, are you a servant and are you a slave? The answer to the question is no. Guess what you are? I'm going to read it to you. Read it Deuteronomy out. chapter 7, verse 6. You are a holy people yes, of God. God. You are above a servant. You are above a slave. This right here happened to us, you see this, as a punishment to our people. You understand yes, what you're right. so far? So that's what I want to show you. In order to gain repentance, in order for you to obtain the love of God, you got to know who God really loves, which is he only loves the Israelites. He don't love no African American because our people calling ourselves that today, right? But he don't love no African American because he don't know what an African American is. God never called anybody an African American. Did your slave master then? Read that. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. So you're not a slave. This is what God said about you, Reed. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You're not a slave. You are a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Read on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be. And look, out of all people, yes, God chose you out of all people to be what? A special people. A special means you got all these people on the earth. But I like these people because look at the music they got. Look how they carry themselves. Look at the beauty of their women. Look at the uh, masculinity of their men. Look at how righteous they are. That's what God said about us as a nation. But you know what happened in America from slavery? Look what we saw in slavery. Where do we learn Christmas? White man's holiday, right? Where do we learn Thanksgiving? Slavery. Where do we learn Halloween? Yes. Where do we learn Easter? That ain't in the Bible. Where do we learn Valentine's Day? What I'm trying to show you is that even still here in America, we have to realize that the majority of our people, not us in this circle right now, not in the house of God right now, we got to understand that the majority of our people don't realize that they still in the slave mind mentality. And what we're trying to do is get your understanding and take that, take that filthiness out. We're trying to brainwash your brain out of all that. We're trying to brainwash all of that nonsense that you was taught in America and give you this pure water. You understand? We give you a good cold glass of drink of water. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? So, you, so that you can be refreshed. So read that verse again. You got something to say? I'm sorry. Go oh, okay. And of our black neighborhoods, you see like maybe like two or three, three different groups in one area. Or one block. You got about three or four. Just like you said. And this one shopping And this one shopping center. So with these many churches, don't nobody have so many churches. And if they, they own race of communities other than us. And we have the most issues. That's telling you that what? These churches ain't teaching right. Give me that whole what you got right here. Give me that in Ezekiel. Here we go right here. 1624. Now what you said is all these churches on every single street corner, right? That's how you know that this Bible is a true book that was only speaking of the children of Israel. Because the white man, he don't need that many churches on the earth. <clears throat> they all know to go to that one big mega church. That's it, right? But check this out. What did God say? Read this. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 24. Yeah. That thou hast also built until thee an eminent place. An eminent place is an important establishment, all right? An eminent place, right? Read. Come on. And has made thee in high place in every street. And God is speaking to Israel. It says, you have made high places on every single what? Every street. On every street. These high places mean places of worship. Because back in ancient times, we would put our temples up on high and worship God from the sky. Stuff like that. We worship other gods from the sky. So we put our high places on like these high mega churches. Read on. Read on every single street corner. Read. Thou hast built thy high place 
At every head of the way. Look, at every head of the way. They go ahead of the way right there. The head of this street right here, where OBT, right? You go further down the street of OBT, you're gonna see another church. We go down to a pop, go another church. Every head of the way we meet. And has made thy beauty. And has made your beauty, meaning your what? Your glory as a nation. Hey, give me this how, right now, you see how you got a beard, brother? Me. That's a glorious thing, but not all of our brothers keep a beard on their face, like Jesus the Christ. But that's a badge of royalty on you right there. You oh, understand? Yeah. That's why every brother you see up here, we got beers on our face. Because Chris, huh? They don't want you to keep your beer. There you go. Showing you what land we in. You right. I used to work at SeaWorld. I, 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 I had to shave off. Yeah. Shoot, I work where I'm at. And they tell me I got to shave, but I can keep my beard at a certain length. You understand? Yeah. But what that is, is we have made our beauty to be a poor because we hate to hear God's commands. You understand? Come on. <laughs> and has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by uh -huh. and multiplied thy whoredoms. It says we have passed our feet to everyone that walks by because we accept, in our churches, in many churches, they say God loves everybody. Come on in. And what they do, they get money from it. You understand? They, and it they becomes. Get all the yes, exactly. And tithes and offers had nothing to do with uh, the church or the Bible. It only had anything to do with your crops. It don't have nothing to do with money. You understand tithes and offers? Right. Do you own crops? Do you own uh, a vineyard to get wine from it? Do you own any cattle? So I'm going to show you that. Deuteronomy 28, verse uh, 48, real quick. I'm going to show you that. You don't own none of them things, so how can you tithe and offer? And you don't own any of them things, so guess what? That means that you are in a curse or a punishment. And we're trying to get our people out of the curse of these laws that's in here. You understand? Because if you break God's commandments, he's going to curse you as a people. You understand? But if you keep God's commandments, he's going to bless you. I'm going to show you the blessing. Bring what it does it truly mean to be blessed? All right? Deuteronomy 28. Actually, before this, let me show you something. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. <coughs> Give me that real quick. You love God? You love God? You love Christ? Right. So here we go. I ask you a question. Do you love God? I'm going to show you straight up. The answer to the, uh, the question that you should probably be asking is, how do I love God? Because when I was brought up, I thought I loved God to my heart. I thought I did everything right. Meanwhile, I was still smoking weed. I was still drinking. I was still jumping from woman to woman to woman. I was still stealing. And I thought I loved God. I thought I loved God. But what is your love when you keep God's commandments? That's what love is. And not only that, if I show you God's commandments, that's love. You understand? So I'm going to show you some love. So you got to ask yourself, do you really love God? Because right now, it's the Lord's Sabbath thing. If you love God, you're going to be obedient to your father. Like if you love your, pa your parents, right? You're going to do what they tell you to do because they raised you right, right? That's what honor thy father and thy father means. That's what it means. So if you love God, our father, our creator, that created these clouds, everything you see, you're going to do what he instructed you to do. Read that verse 17. Right. 19, verse 17. I'm going to show you some love in this Bible real quick. Hey, bro. You ain't listening. Okay. Hey, check this out real quick. We're showing our people that according to the Bible, that they are God's chosen. That's you. You understand? Hey, what's your nationality, man? Real quick, real quick. What's your nationality? Huh? Okay, so what God ever called you a Haitian at in the Bible? What scripture? <coughs> Christ, you understand? But you gotta walk Christ like that. 
Negro Israelite of the nation of Levi. You understand? Yeah. So I'm going to show you some love. Read this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Come on, come on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. I don't hate you. We don't hate you. You are not to hate your brother in your heart. Read. Thou shalt not in any way. God said, thou shalt in any wise. Read it right. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise. But you shall in any wise. What you should do is what? Rebuke thy neighbor. Rebuke your neighbor. Because look, if I see him in error, right? If I see him got a gun and he's going to kill somebody. I'm supposed to warn that person that they're going to die. If I see this brother drinking too much, I'm supposed to be like, that's going to kill you, brother. Don't drink too much. If I see this brother smoking, I'm going to tell you that on the box, it'll say it will cause cancer. Thus, it will kill you, brother. Out of love of God, don't do that. Christ right, never did you. Yeah. If you know God's commandments, guess what? You're going to get the kingdom of heaven. You understand? Because you're not going to get the pain of a heaven with that black and mild in your hand. You understand? Now, I know this captivity, this land that we're living in, it's stressful. We got to, we think that's going to relieve our stress. But you know the ultimate stress to me is? It's violent when you know who you are. Because you're smoking that black and mild as a Haitian. But God never called you a Haitian. God said you are the nation of Israel. You are a Levite. Thus, you will know how to carry yourself. You understand? You are God's chosen people. You are his son. You understand? And you'll carry yourself differently. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.